Okay, so here's review question number one, and it's the old falling watermelon question, and how fast is it falling, or how far is it fallen, or what's the speed of it over the first six seconds. So we're going to check it out here. They gave us an equation of uh, 16t squared. So anytime we're looking for an average speed, we're looking for the stop part of the function minus the start uh, part of the function. All over stop minus start. And, and so when we're working this thing out, one thing that we need to remember is that we're talking about the first six seconds. So we're going to start at zero, we're going to stop at six. So here's your, here's your start, and here's your stop. Okay. And so when we set this up then, we're going to use this guy as our function. Here's our function right here. So we're going to have uh, our stop, which is going to be 16 times 6 squared minus uh, where we started, which is going to be 16 times 0 squared. All of that over 6 minus 0. So 16 times 36 divided by 6. And so when you punch all that into your calculator, you get 96. And since, since we're falling, uh, we're talking about feet per second. <coughs> All right, what we're going to do on this problem is uh, look at a limit. And one of the cool things about limits is you can make a direct substitution into that problem. So if we can make that direct substitution, life just gets really nice. So let's take a look. Uh, with this limit, as x approaches 0, I've got x cubed minus 6x plus 8 over x minus 2. And I want to just check real quick. Can I put a 0 in for all the x's? And when I do that, if I put a 0 in for all the x's, will I get any... Um, undefined points or point, points that might not be in the domain or whatever. And so the only issue we really are going to have to worry about <clears throat> is down here in the denominator. And 0 minus 2 works. Like, that's, that's an okay deal. So what we're going to end up with is 0 cubed minus 6 times 0 plus 8 all divided by 0 minus 2. And when I simplify this down, I'm going to get 8 divided by negative 2, which is negative 4. And, and that's your limit. That's all you got to do. All right, so here's another limit substitution problem, except this time, uh, if you'll notice, when you try and substitute that 6 in there, the negative 6, you're going to wind up with an undefined problem. And so the best way to handle this situation is to see if anything will factor and reduce. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take this top part right here, and we're going to look and see, will the top factor? And if the top can factor, we're going to be on the road to a good math problem here. So I'm going to take x and uh, x all over x plus 6. And what times what is 18? That adds up to 9. That's going to be 6 and 3. And those are both pluses. And what we'll notice here is I've got an x plus 6 on the bottom and an x plus 6 on the top. So basically the problem I'm solving is the limit as x approaches negative 6 of x plus 3. And in this case, all I need to do to solve it, to finish solving, is to let that negative 6 
go in for X. So for this particular problem, I should get negative 3.